Hi everybody and I just want to go through some basics before we start the class. Uh, just remember to look at the syllabus and check the dates. If you have any questions about the dates please message me on the Kakao group chat or message me via my email address that's in the syllabus. and if you haven't already uh, please check which Google Classroom you need to be signed on to the passwords are there if you need any help with the Google Classroom please again send me a message using Kakao Talk or ask another student who's already signed on to Google Classroom if you go onto the website it should help you cite give you uh, instructions about how to sign up for the class. Another thing you need to make sure that you get done is to be on the IQ Online Practice. This you can find at the front of your book, the first two pages. If you follow the instructions there and sign up for my class, you can see on this slide here the class codes that I've recommended for you to join. Please make sure you join the right class because uh, I'll need to check to see whether you've done the work that I've assigned you through this uh, website. This is the schedule for 003. Uh, there will be uh, this won't be the complete schedule. If you have any questions about that, you need to contact me. As you know, due to the coronavirus, uh, the schedules had to be changed slightly this semester. But if you just check through there, that will give you details about the midterms, the projects, and the finals. And if you have any more questions, as I said, contact me. This schedule is for my 023 class. Again, as I said previously to the other class, look at there for the midterms, the projects, the finals, and other relevant dates. If you have questions about holidays, contact me. And this one's for my 029 class. And Again, all the dates are there, midterms, finals, projects, and as I said, any questions, contact me. So this is also the schedule for class 026. Check the midterm dates, the final dates, the project dates, and other dates that are relevant to you, and let me know if you have any questions. If we haven't done the midterm already, if this class is before the midterm, please make sure you understand about the role plays for the midterms. Here's the slide for that, and there's lots of information there. Um, and I think it would be good for you to remember that everyone should be involved in role plays, whether it's for the midterm or not, that all students should participate thoroughly in that role play. So these are the uh, what you need to study for the midterm and the finals. If we haven't done the midterms yet, please check units 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can see the pages that are required on there. So unit 1, for example, has, a vocabulary, uh, has vocabulary questions from page 7 and grammar from page 20. The finals, if we've done the midterm already, don't forget the finals cover units 5, 6 and 7 and also the pages are there uh, if you have any questions about unit 7 because it's been blanked off there, let me know but you should find those on my PPTs that I send via the Kakao uh, open chat. This is a reminder about the project work it's got the link on there. Actually, I've sent you the same slide to the Kakao Talk chat room. And I think if you just go on to the project 
time uh, project table which is on my Google Drive and you can you can find more information about the projects there don't forget to work as a team to try to meet the deadlines which are on the deadline pages the schedule pages of the slides so good luck So in this presentation we are going to continue with the theme of education and um, there's lots of movies that are about education. The first one I'd like to talk about is a movie called Election. So Election is a 1999 American black comedy and the main actress in the movie is Reese Witherspoon and co-star Matthew Broderick and the movie plot is about um, te a teacher called Jim and one of his students called Tracy she's kind of an overachiever she's like the best student and she wants to run for student body president so and it's a bit more serious than it is in Korea there's a kind of intensity about becoming a student body president there's lots of um, uh, well it's a lot of it's kind of like polit politics in America it's very lots of ballots and it's very strict about it and you know um, yeah so <clears throat> I mean it's worth watching it's also good to understand how democracy in America is in everything it's in schools it's in life generally Americans are very strict about democracy. So they're really proud of it because it's, you know, one of the first countries to be a democratic country, really, in the way that it is today. So there's a lot of passion around elections. If you go onto IMDb, the uh, the website, it gives the rating a 7.2, so it gets a C minus, but it's actually quite funny and. I kind of recommend it. Uh, the actress Reese Witherspoon is a very funny woman, and this movie I think you will really like. It did actually get nominated for one Oscar, which is quite interesting. And on Rotten Tomatoes, they gave the critics gave it 92%, so that's a A minus. Although the audience didn't like it as much, and they only gave it. Uh, C plus 79 percent so you can actually watch this on Netflix or Prime Video or Apple TV so I'm gonna try to see if I can watch it now because I'm kind of interested I've got Netflix and some people didn't like it um, some people really loved it if you go onto the Rotten Tomatoes web page you can see uh, what the critics thought and at the bottom of the page they, it gives you a rundown of what each critic thought of the movie. Another well-known well -known movie about school life um, is a movie called Rushmore by Wes Anderson. So if you know anything about Wes Anderson he's one of those quirky kind of directors who's made loads of weird films like The Grand Budapest Hotel, The Royal Tenenbaums, and uh, movies like Fantastic Mr. Fox and my all-time favorite Isle of Dogs which I absolutely love I think he's a fantastic director so he directed this movie called Rushmore and this movie is also <clears throat> about you uh, it's about studying and school life um, it's a coming-of-age comedy drama they've called it on Wikipedia and it's about this eccentric teenager named Max Fisher so Usually these TV shows and movies have eccentric teenagers, a bit quirky and weird, not normal. So, and the main actor for this is Jason Schwartzman, who became quite popular through this film. And there's also other really famous actors like Bill Murray and Brian Cox. <clears throat> and he's a 15-year-old boy, and he's got a scholarship at an academy in a private school. But he's... Uh, he does a lot of extracurricular activity and he doesn't do any study so that's why he gets into trouble 
and anyway it's worth watching um, but if we go to if you go to IMDB the score is 70 7.7 7.7 7 out of 10 so it's like uh, a C plus a, uh, this website considers it better than uh, election um, and if you go to uh, the other website um, Rotten Tomatoes actually the critics gave it 89% so that's a B plus almost an A and the audience score was higher than that they gave it an A minus or 91% so it was really well received by the audiences and the critics and I kind of recommend it. There's interesting things about the movie on IMDB. It gives you some quotes um, from the movie. And it also uh, gives you some reviews about the movie if you look at that. And on Rotten Tomatoes, they also have critics uh, comments at the bottom. And a breakdown of all the actors in the movie. So that's... Um, and audience reviews too on this web page so one person said quirky offbeat and clever so I recommend you watch that movie and or at least watch some of the clips on you on movie clips on YouTube so now I want to do a mind map about pros and cons of internship what companies would you like to do an internship for so first of all what are the pros and cons of internship you might want to do this alone or you could do this with a group member use Kakao Talk or call them on the phone so um, I found this great web page called DELTS.org and it's got an article there called the good the bad and the ugly the pros and cons of internship and <clears throat> so there's lots of pros and cons so one of the pros could be experience so uh, what do they mean by experience? Um, if you have an internship and you get experience that would just look so good on your resume right? And so I think that's what they mean. They mean just getting that kind of resume um, improved by getting experience from an internship um, and the other, the other thing that could be interesting. It says here um, is obviously to gain experience, gain knowledge, see if you're interested in it. If you come away saying I don't want to do that after graduation then you've actually um, you're kind of learning something from that. So is it interesting? Some internships are interesting but some are terrible but I'm sure, I'm sure most are quite interesting I don't know whether working for any company that you like would be interesting or not but maybe it would be as I said before it can help you decide what you want to do in the future it can give you that career compass tell, give you a direction so the other thing, thing it can do is lead to networking making friends with people who can help you find jobs in the future connect and can help you um, you know uh, get um, someone for you know as a reference it's it's a great way to grow as a person with regards to relationships with other people and the last thing is it may even lead to a job if you take this internship you could get a job there eventually now here's the negatives one of the negatives is obviously you've got to do it for nothing there's no money involved in this the money is terrible another point is you are not on equal terms with the rest of the company you are lower than everyone you have no rights and no power and the next one is there's no focus you can't you can't uh, um, you can't I don't know choose what you do there and you can't have a particular direction they're all the jobs are all over the place and not, a lot of them are not very interesting and that's the last point they're very boring menial jobs that you do with an internship so what about where you would like to work I think a lot of Koreans like to do 
um, Samsung and LG and all those kind of things, you know. But uh, what about a smaller company? What about an American company? So lots of people want to do Samsung and LG because they think, oh, it's great. It's like the best companies in the world or in Korea. But what about small and middle-sized Korean companies? Not, not all uh, jobs at Samsung are happy jobs. I've heard of terrible stories about people who've worked there in the past. And not all parts of Samsung and LG are doing well at the moment. Some of them are not succeeding. Some of them are. But so, and there's only a f <laughs> it's only so many jobs in Samsung. Not everybody can do those jobs. So maybe it's worth thinking about other jobs outside of those companies. Here's some question. Here's some questions that are kind of based on the grammar from the unit um, using a complex sentence question. What do you do if jump, jump, jump? So there are eight questions here. This is something you can do with your friends and people in your groups. You can again, I say, contact them. Anyway, question number one: What do you do if the weather is hot? So, if the weather is hot, I usually try to keep cool, I eat ice cream, I sweat a lot, I put on lots of deodorant so that I don't smell. I think it's important to think about hygiene when it's hot. You must make sure you are not stinky for people. What about the next one? What do you do if the weather is cold? So, keep, I keep warm by wrapping up in warm clothes. It's a very simple question really. I wear a, a muffler and gloves and a very worn coat. So yeah, that's important that we keep warm during the winter. So why don't you answer those questions yourself? Let's go to question number three. What do you do if you have a lot of money? Well, I don't have a lot of money, but if I did, if I have a lot of money, I would not work anymore I would give up my job maybe maybe I wouldn't actually I think I'd like to keep my job maybe I would not work so hard though and would have a lot more free time to spend with things I enjoy and people I enjoy what do you do if you have a hangover usually I take some tablets like Tylenol if I have a hangover I, f I usually have headaches and I feel like I need to take some tablets. What do you do if you argue with a friend? Usually I ignore them for a while and when I'm ready I talk to them. Yeah, so sometimes friends upset me but you have to still like them, right? Because they're your friends. What would do you do if you're sick with a cold? I think these days it's best to just stay at home, keep warm and don't do anything. <laughs> Um, which is probably the best thing at the moment. What do you do if you meet a rude person? Oh, sometimes I just want to get angry and react, and I have done in the past. But actually, reacting to angry people probably isn't the best thing to do, right? So maybe acting kindly to them. If the food is not cooked properly, I don't know, maybe I would complain. How about you? Would you complain about uncooked food? Some people would, wouldn't they? So here's an activity. Um, what I want you to do is try to answer this letter. So it's from someone called Mike and he's writing to his mum and dad. And, and I'll read the letter to you. I tried to ring you earlier today but couldn't get through for some reason. Now I've borrowed some notepaper and stamps just to let you know what has happened. Last night in the youth hostel at Innsbruck, someone stole my money, my passport, my interrail card and my camera. I'm furious that I hadn't put everything in my sleeping bag with me as I usually do. This morning I went straight to the police but they weren't very hopeful about getting my things back. The thief was probably cleared out of, has probably cleared out of the country. I've hitchhiked to Salzburg to try and get some help from Uncle Harry and Aunt May, but they seem to be away. All the blinds are down and nobody answers the phone. Still, they aren't expecting me 
till next week. I don't know where or how I'll sleep tonight. Perhaps at the station. Thank God it's warm. Please, please, could you send me some money? Send me some money as quickly as possible. Care of the main post office. I wish I had the money from a telegram. For a telegram. Do hurry. I'll try to do something about the passport and interrail card tomorrow. But money is the most important thing. I've got very little food left. So here's a letter about a young man who's in a lot of trouble. Uh, he went travelling and he had a lot of things stolen. His money, his passport, his interrail card and his camera. Now, if you were that mum and dad, how would you reply to that, that letter? I guess you would be a little bit worried, right? So I guess I would be saying, looking at each detail here, he's saying send the money to the main post office. Well, he hasn't given me much detail about the main post office. I guess they can find out, but he needs to, he probably needed to send them more details about that so that they knew how they could send the money there. I'm not sure, maybe these days it's better to use the internet to receive money like PayPal but back then I guess they had different methods of sending money so he lost his passport and I think he needs to go to the um, to the embassy for that the British embassy and he can't travel anywhere because he's lost his interrail card so I guess he needs to <laughs> ask for some help from somewhere maybe um, if he can't get the money from his parents maybe he needs to just go and look for a good Samaritan to help him what about you if you were the mum and dad how would you reply to that okay let's turn to the book and go to page 130 in page 130 is our listening activity. Listening 1. Changing ways to climb the ladder. So I think you will need to log on to IQ Online for this. So go to page 130 and preview the listening. Is it better to work for one company for many years or to change companies often in order to make progress in your career? So you can discuss that with any of your team using Kakao, okay? Would you prefer to be for in one company or different companies over the years? And here's the vocabulary. There are 12 words altogether. Um, you'll probably need to use a dictionary to look up some of these words. So we've already talked about these before when we did the crazy story. So the first one, um, there are one, two, three, or five nouns. The nouns have got the letter N at the end. Advancement, attitude, career path are three nouns. And there's model and structure too. Climb the ladder is a phrase. Climb the ladder means to go up in the company, to become the president. Count on is a phrasal verb. I count on you. Okay, so there's a phrasal verb there. It's made up of a verb plus a kind of preposition. What well, looks like a preposition. I count on you means I trust in you. I believe in you. Okay? And they're all pretty much similar kinds of structures. They're all phrasal verbs that count on, trust in, believe in you. Okay. Currently, it's got ly on the end. Usually, adverbs have ly. You've got another adverb in that list, radically also has an ly okay so radically and currently are adverbs and here's a verb devote devote is from is similar to the word devotion it's kind of be devoted to someone means to commit to them some people say i'm devoted to my religion i'm devoted to my wife yeah loyal is quite similar to the word devote but it's an adjective. I am loyal. I am loyal to my wife. I am loyal to my church. Okay. I am loyal to my country. And there we got model. Model is a noun in this case. And there could be different types 
of meaning there. Uh, I think in this case, a model could be a kind of uh, like a way of life, a model. It's difficult. There's lots of meanings to model. And we've talked about radically. Another adjective there is stable. He is stable means he is strong. And the noun structure. So work through those words, look them up in the dictionary, then do the listening and make notes in the table there. You've got traditional model for advancement and modern model for advancement. Um, so work through those tables by doing the listening. Which model do you think is best or better? Uh, traditional or modern? I'm sure most people will think modern these days. Most people believe traditional models are not as effective. And then read those statements for part C on page 131. Part C, questions 1 to 5, are they true or false? And then listen again and the correct model for each statement. So number one, this model was common in the 1950s in North America. I would have thought traditional model, but I haven't, I don't know, I'm guessing, okay? Go through those questions, two, three, four, five, and six. This model is currently more common in the United States. Number three, workers start at small companies to get experience. Number four, workers start at the bottom level of a big company. Number five, Workers are loyal to one company and expect the company to take care of them. Number six, workers are not very loyal to the companies they work for. I think the new one is not very loyal. I think that's a new model, right? Turn the page and there's more. Number seven, workers are like family in a company. Not anymore. Well, maybe still in Samsung. I don't know. Number eight, workers get to the top of the ladder about four years faster. Number nine, this model is more flexible. Number 10, companies don't often take care of workers when they retire. So number 8 is interesting, getting to the top of the ladder, ladder in a shorter time. I think that's true today. So let's look at the vocabulary. There's 12 uh, sentences there, and you need to fill them in with the 12 words or phrases, okay, in that box. So that's continuing from the vocabulary. You can see that the vocabulary is the same as page 130. So let's just look at number one. This company is very, hmm, they have a strong business plan and they won't go out of business anytime soon. Very well. It's got to be an adjective and there's only two, there's only two there. You've got the word is. This company is very, with a, uh, it's either loyal or stable. I think it's stable. This company is very stable. They have a strong business plan and they won't go out of business anytime soon. Okay. Let's go to the listening skills on page 133. Listen for contrasting ideas. So when speakers contrast things or ideas, they use special words and phrases to point out different characteristics of the things being discussed. The simplest way to show a contrast is to use a comparative adjective, than. So you can see uh, that it's got faster than there in that particular sentence. Speakers also contrast things and ideas by using phrases such as in contrast to, instead of, however, on the other hand, but, rather than, and whereas. So in the listening, the speaker contrasts the traditional model with the new model in contrast to the single ladder model. On the other hand, often the worker is able to move to a position. So you've got there's some examples. So these phrases are very useful to get the idea about contrasting in a listening activity. And so listen to the discussion about two candidates if you go to page 134. Uh, fill in the blanks with the contrasting words and phrases you hear. Okay? And then do more listening there and fill it in the chart. Are employers loyal in traditional models? Yes or no? Are they empl are employers loyal in new models? Yes or no? So fill out that table for the listening activity. Uh, are in, is the model like a family for the traditional model or the new model? Is it a single ladder model? Can workers advance quickly? Is the model more common today? I'm going to guess 
I know the answers to this, I think, without listening, but maybe you need to do the listening for that. Let's go to the second listening, and this one is, what are the reasons why a student might want to take a year off from school? And then you can discuss that. We talked about that a lot already. Then here's some words. There's uh, 12 words here, and the first word is commute. So commute means to go backwards and forwards from work in the, in the morning, in the afternoon. It's a noun. This box has one, two, three, four nouns. Okay, commute, concept, peer, and point. Commute, uh, the commute into work. Yeah, and then there's verbs here. One, two, three, four verbs, and one phrasal verb. So that's five verbs. Dare, face, figure, log, stand out. Okay. Then there's some adjectives too, particular and rigorous. Okay, so one phrase serve one well. Okay, so read about them. Try to get un to understand the meaning of them. Use your dictionary. Then do the listening. Listen to the radio program. Then list the advantages and disadvantages of taking a gap year in the chart below. So you've got taking a gap year, advantages and disadvantages. And and then part, go to the next page, page 136, and uh, you can see uh, there's a lot of um, questions here. Imagine a student, part B, imagine a student wanted to take a gap year, but his or her parents thought starting university right away was a better idea. Work with a partner. Use your notes to write a dialogue between a teenager and a parent about this choice. So work together on that. Part C. Read the statements and are they true or false? Okay. Part D, read the questions, then listen again and circle the correct answers. Okay. Go to part page one three seven. Part E, what are the advantages that Trudy Goodman mentions about working in disadvantaged schools? So she's got a list there. She was tired of studying. She had more time for her hobbies. Her experience felt more real. She made a lot of new friends. She already has real world work experience. She didn't need to study as hard when she returned to school. Okay. Then here's about here's some questions about the vocabulary. Read the sentences, then write each bold word next to the correct definition. Okay. So you've got questions one to twelve there, going on to page one hundred and thirty-eight, and there are the definitions on the next page, A to L. Okay. So for example. Taking time off before getting to college is a new concept for more students. So what does concept mean? Well, concept is a noun, okay? And so if I look down and look at the ends, I think the answer is uh, an idea or basic principle, K. So that's what I think the answer is for that one. Go to page 139. Discuss the questions in a group. If you could go anywhere in the world for a year, where would you go? That's for your gap year. If a close friend were considering taking off a year between high school and college, what advice would you give your friend? What types of gap year activities could help prepare someone for a career in education? What about in banking? So then watch this video and answer the questions. You need to go onto IQ Online, okay? And then Let's go to page number 140. Using the dictionary, formal and informal words. So these are vocabulary skills. English does not have strong rules of formality like some languages do. However, in some situations, it may be more appropriate to use certain words than others. In other more casual situations, it may be more appropriate to use less formal vocabulary such as phrasal verbs and idioms. It is helpful to know how to use certain words and phrases. A dictionary can guide you on which word to use. It will tell you if a word is informal or slang. If a definition doesn't say this, you can usually assume it is more formal or neutral. Here are some examples. Hang, hang around, socialize. So here we've got a phrasal verb. A phrasal verb is kind of very informal. Let's hang around but the more formal word would be to socialize. The dictionary categorizes hang around and hang out as informal, 
but socialize has no description like this okay here are some examples of appropriate use to your friends you'd say I'll be hanging around all day to your family I'm going to hang out with my friends today in presentation most teenagers enjoy socializing with friends so that's um, something you could focus on vocabulary skills wise read the pairs of sentences and check the sentence that sounds more formal so you can see actually um, I think number one it's quite easy they've already done the answer anyway but if you go through questions two three and four and choose which one sounds more formal and then if you go to the next page on page 141 read the sentences circle the answer that means almost the same as the bold word in the sentence so hang around means I don't think we need to hang around here until he returns or wait okay he was hoping to get promotion at work so go through those questions and answer those and then part C circle the appropriate synonym to complete each sentence then work with a partner to read the conversation good morning I'm here to have a word or speak it speaks so correct uh, correctly circle the right answers and then work with a partner to complete that dialogue okay so I want us to do a quick activity here uh, this is a kind of a game um, I think it might be good to do with other people in the class it's called awards so what you need to do is mind map all the awards you can think of well immediately I can think of the Oscars which is uh, movie awards but maybe you know of other other awards that are famous in Korea or other international awards now make a brainstorm of invented awards think of some really random things for example best glasses award for the actor who wears the best glasses they must be positive awards you can't say worst glasses awards it's got to be something positive you've got to use the best or the most or the most fantastic okay choose so work in your groups to do that just make loads of mind map loads of uh, ideas there write loads of ideas then choose two categories of awards that you would like to find candidate for candidates for choose two categories of awards that you would like to find candidates for now each group member describes someone you know who deserves that reward and one person in the group does the note taking for example best haircut in movies award probably would go to Robert Downey Jr. okay and discuss and choose the candidates from the list share with the class so maybe there are four people with nice hair who wins who wins the award and basically everyone describes one person everyone chooses one famous person so one person in the team might choose Robert Downey Jr another person might choose Chris Evans another person might choose Mark Ruffalo and another person might choose um, Chris Hemsworthy Hemsworth and you can decide and say why you think they should win the award and then other another person will take the notes and at the end you will discuss and reward the famous actor with the award you think they deserve if you have any questions about this please message me please message me here's a quick idea something you could prepare with your team prepare a presentation or a role play and this is this particular presentation or role play is about internships so what are the pros and cons of internships so you can do this as a presentation or you can do this as a role play if you want to do it as a presentation you can do it alone if you want to do it as a role play it's probably best to do it with a t with a teammate now here's the second question if you had to do an internship where would you want to work 
a small, medium or large company, large size company. And why? So many people would say, I want to work at Samsung or LG, okay? So if you could think about that, prepare a presentation or a role play about those things, okay? What are the pros and cons of internship? The pros are you get to get some you get to have work experience. The cons are you don't have any money. Think of five pros and five cons. If you had to do an internship, where would you want to work? Small, medium or large size companies. Most people want large size companies because it looks good on the resume, especially if you worked at Samsung. But why not a smaller company? Why not a medium sized company? Why does everyone want to work in larger companies? So prepare a presentation. If you're going to do a role play, I don't know how you can do that. Maybe like a, two friends talking about their internships. So now I want you to read these extra questions, try to answer them by yourself or if you can with your team, work with your uh, group or a classmate who's on the same course as you. Question number one, choose a company. Why do you want to intern here? Okay, so I'm going to choose Apple. Why do I want to intern at Apple? Because I love Apple phones. I think the Apple is iPhone is one of the best phones on the market. I also have an iPad. I love my iPad. It's so convenient and light and I can carry it anywhere and watch movies wherever there wherever there is Wi-Fi. And I love my iPad so much. Okay. And I think working for Apple would be really good because I think the management there are well organized and very kind people. Question number three. What do you expect this position to be like? Well, I kind of feel that Apple is a very relaxed company. I feel that Apple is very a very relaxed company. That Apple is not so strict. That the hours are not long. And, that, and people are not bullied into working harder. This makes me feel that the atmosphere will be more congenial and therefore more motivating and people will willingly work harder for this company because there's less pressure from above. Why should we hire you? Because I am self-motivated and I reach, meet my deadlines and I love a challenge. Give me this job. What's your goal with this internship? Well, I'm hoping that through this internship, I can write something in my resume and I can become a much better worker. And I think I can um, use this to bring positivity to my future jobs. Number six, tell me about some of your school involvements and how they relate to this job. Well. So what you can do is continue reading questions 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Answer those questions with your teammate and think about what kind of future jobs you would like. Try to be creative here. This is like interview questions for an internship. But these would be similar questions for a job too. Or even for um, some other thing that you want to do. Maybe a course that you want to study in another country. So think about these questions and try to answer them the best you can. Think th about them analytically and talk to your friend about them, okay? So this is the end of this presentation. Um, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me through Kakao Talk. And this really is from Unit 6. As you know, our, mid, our final test will have questions from Unit 6. So, and today we covered some of the final tests in the listening activities. You can find out what uh, listening activity is in the test in the presentations I send you by Kakao Talk and at the front, of, at the beginning of this video.